Now let's see how to implement event-driven logging. Let's go back to the configure application under configure data logging. There we have our existing logging group called test. Let's change the logging group name to test2. Under the common tab, change the logging type to event-driven. And let's browse for a point on the system that will, when it transitions from false to true, will trigger a record. We'll select pump value and select OK. Now when the pump transitions from false to true, we'll take a new record to the database. Under the tags tab, we'll leave it the same as the existing fields we had in the test logging group. Under the database tab, we'll change the table name to test2. And under the CSV logging tab, we'll uncheck that one. So we're only logging to the database engine. If we now add that new logging group, we now have two logging groups. One that has continuous logging and one that has event-driven logging to test two. Now we'll use the example application to turn the pump on and off. Under the program group opcsystems.net, we can launch the example application. Under the menu selection, we'll select symbols. And the pump point is this pump in the middle of the screen. So if we turn the pump off and back on several times, each time that the pump transitions from false to true, we're taking a new record. The resolution of this event-driven logging is to 100 nanoseconds. So from your own Visual Studio application, we can log data as fast as 100 nanoseconds. When, and we will demonstrate this later in the video of logging high-speed data from your own Visual Studio application. Now let's take a look at that data in the database. We'll launch the SQL Server Management Studio. Connect to the database engine. And we'll go in and query that new table called test2 from that database. There we see a record for each time that the pump transitions from false to true and the values that are recorded at that specific time. Now let's see how to log high-speed data from your own Visual Studio application. The OPC Controls data component was demonstrated in the data sources training video. We're going to review that for you again. First we need to define some tags for the Visual Studio application to write the values to. Select from the configure application, select configure tags, select the local service, and let's add three tags. The first with the tag name value 01, the second with the tag name value 02, and the third with the name value 03. We can then save that tag configuration to our local demo con tags. And we should see those three new tags in the list. We are going to leave the data source at value. We just need it to be a fixed value that a Visual Studio application can write to. For the high speed logging, we're going to add a, another tag called trigger. We are going to change the data type of this tag to a boolean. Select apply changes and again save that to your file. We're now ready to set up the data logging for the Visual Studio application. Go back to the data logging tab and select the test2 logging group. Under the common tab we're going to leave the logging active and the logging type is event driven but this time we're going to change the uh, trigger from the pump signal to the trigger tag. Next under the tags tab we'll right click on the field list and delete all of the existing tags from that logging group and add three new tags 
from value 1, value 2, and value 3. Remember that you can right click on the field list and perform a CSV export and CSV import if you need to set up multiple tags. But do remember to not use spaces, commas, dashes, or periods in any of your field names, anything that a database engine would not like. OPCSystems.net tags do allow spaces, but third-party reporting products typically do not like spaces in field names. In order to maintain high-speed resolution, we're also going to include the millisecond, microsecond, and nanosecond field names. You can change the field names to anything you'd like, but don't use reserved words that SQL Server uses like date, time, value, select. These are all special words that SQL Server engine and other database engines would not like as a field name. Under the database tab, we'll log to that same database, but under the table name, we'll call it VS App. Change the login group name to VS App and click the Add button in the lower left to add that login group. You can, you can see logging data from a Visual Studio application is no different than logging data from an OPC server or from an OPC client. Anytime you make changes to any of the login groups, either adding a login group or applying changes, you would then want to save that login configuration to a file. I'll call this one Test save and then under configure options is where you specify the default data logging file to launch when the OPC system service first starts. We're now ready to begin our Visual Studio application development. With Visual Studio started I'm now going to create a new standard Windows application. The OPC Controls Data Component is the key feature that is used to write values to your real-time database, which then in turn can be logged to your SQL Server engine. You can choose Visual Basic or Visual C Sharp. You can also use the OPC Controls Data Component in a web application, and we also have a data component for OPC mobile applications as well. We select OK on our standard Windows application and the form designer appears. You can also make a Windows service and implement the data component in your own Windows service as well. Here we're just going to drop a regular button onto the form. Let's change the properties of that button so the text reads write new values. Then double click on the button and now we're ready to enter the code. I'm going to use the same code that's demonstrated in the training guide found under the program group opcsystems.net and help. Under the training guide you will find a section on how to implement high-speed data logging if we take a look at the bookmarks, there we see a topic that says data logging high-speed data from Visual Studio application. It is code similar to this that I'm going to implement now in this Visual Studio application. In the code we have copied from the training guide, we are setting up some arrays of tags, values, and timestamps that we want to write to the real-time service. The last piece of the code is we need an OPC controls data component in order to write the values to. That is the one simple method used to write to a real-time database. And remember that we are going to log based upon event for every time the trigger tag transitions from false to true. So in this code example, we're actually transitioning the trigger multiple times in the one write method. So this way you can write thousands of values per second and log them all. Back to the form designer, if you have not yet added the OPC controls product to your toolbox, 
right click on the toolbox and select choose items and there you want to select the OPC controls data component if you do not see your toolbox you can select view toolbox here we have just dropped the OPC controls data component onto the form we're now ready to run and test this application so you can select debug start debugging or hit F5 and now each time you click on the button we're going to write multiple values I've just clicked on the button just one time so that we should have logged three new records to the database engine with that one write now let's take a look at that data with the SQL Server Management Studio we'll go into the database OPC test and under the tables we should have a new table that is VS app if we select script table as select to new query editor we can see those field names of value 01, 02, 03, and also the milliseconds, microseconds, and nanoseconds. We would then execute that query, and we can see, and we can see the three records that we've written, with the milliseconds at 460, the microseconds at 625, and the nanoseconds we incremented just by 100 nanoseconds each record, so we have 200, 300, and 400 nanoseconds for that one record. So if we go back to the Visual Studio application and click on the button again, and then go back to the database engine and execute the query again, we have again three additional records. To log data from a remote OPC system service, that's quite easy. Under the tags definition, you simply include the network node name, IP address, or domain name in each of the tags that you want to retrieve data from. So when we're defining a new tag, instead of selecting a local service, we would enter in a remote service. Here I'm going to use an IP address. When I hit the select button, we'll now be browsing the tags on that remote service, and we can then of course select any of the tags. When we when we select that tag, we see that the IP address is included in the tag name. And once a connection is established, and the network connection between the data logging service and the remote service is temporarily lost, we will buffer data on the remote service. And remember to take advantage of the data logging buffering to disk under, found under configure options, so that the amount of data to buffer during that network loss is only limited by your hard disk size that is found here under the feature store data logging buffering to disk and again because we provide queuing in all opcsystems.net features you can still maintain 100 nanosecond resolution from that remote data source even if you're logging across the internet if you are logging data from a remote service that has security enabled to restrict reading tags you will want to specify a username and password that has privileges appropriate to to read the tags you are interested in logging under configure security there is the read tags tab and if you have disabled all tags from reading or even specific tags or even specific tags to be read from client applications then under the data logging service that is connected to that remote service you want to go to configure options on the data logging service and specify the security username and security password so the data logging service will have access privilege to the data that it needs to log otherwise the data will not be available and you will not be able to log the data if you have any other questions about OPC systems .net or the OPC database .net product feature visit the website opcsystems.com there are other training videos you can view also under the sales page is where you can find who to purchase the software from and also ask other technical questions we have representatives located all over the world